Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you are here. If uh, this is your first time here, or if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button down below if you're so inclined. Um, if you hit the bell notification icon next to the uh, subscribe button after you subscribed, it'll let YouTube know you're a human who's interested in my EDC knife content. And it'll also notify you when I release updated videos, new videos, go live. And it really just helps, allegedly, my videos be seen by more people. So today I wanted to take a few minutes and do a review of, yes guys, another slip joint. I have, um, I started out with just one, quickly progressed to two, um, yeah, and this is my first Rough Rider Reserve. I heard really good things about Rough Rider Reserve, and this is the Hippo Toe. This is kind of a chonky little beast. It's thin. Um, I keep it in my traditional pocket knife slip. It seems to fit that one really well. Can squeeze it, comes right out. It's a nice, what I would consider an overbuilt Warncliffe uh, slip joint. What you notice about it is it does have the stainless bolsters, stainless shield, nice micarta, green micarta, handles and this is done a little bit differently kind of more like the boker micarta where it's sealed behind a acrylic or an epoxy pin construction it does have this unique lanyard hole here at the back which you could probably fit with a little help a full-size lanyard for the lanyard lovers but i know you could do or make do with some of the smaller size lanyards um, if that's what you're into, right? It would make it easier to get in and out of pocket or in and out of a slip. But guys, let's take a look at this Rough Rider Reserve Hippo, Hippo, Hippo Toe. It has got a very nice walk and talk. It does have a half stop. Stops very securely there. I've noticed in slip joints, some of them do, some of them don't. We'll get into that as we kind of go through my delving into them. Again, I'm still into flippers, guys. I'm still into thumb stud knives. I'm still into my modern folders. That's where my love is. But I, could, I would be wrong to hear so many positive things or so many people liking these, not to try them, just to be a hater and then not bring them to you. Now, if you ever see me with a Bally song or a butterfly knife, please unsubscribe, DM me, ask me WTF is going on with you. I just kid, guys. I might get into Bally songs one day, but I don't think I'd have fingers left. This little Rough Ride Reserve is a couple of things that I don't like about it. A, and this is not a negative, but it is made overseas in China. This is, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken Smoky Mountain Knife Works um, company. But there is some heavy branding, as I was consider on this blade. So you've got RRR, Rough Rider Reserve. Totally get that. Nothing wrong with that. And then you've got the model number here, which the RRR015. The 015 is the pattern. It's the pattern 15, whatever that means. And then D2 steel and China. And no, I was not at all concerned that this was D2 steel. This knife um, retailed from Smoky Mountain Knife Works for $57, I think. It's absolutely sound. It's absolutely solid. Uh, the spring is done very well. The fit and finish on this knife is done very, very well. It is, again, a chonkier, a little bit chonkier blade, but it's got a nice, let's see if I've got a piece of a coupon here. Very slicey, but still thick enough to use, not that we pry with our knives, but should you need to do some heavier work, heavier cutting, um, I do think the hippo toe is up to the challenge. And again, I have a lot of knives in tool steel, um, especially slip joints. 
So I maintain my knives with oil or primarily Wicked Waxed and Wicked Clean from Depreet Forge. Good stuff. If you get a chance, you can go back and look at my video on that. I'm sure I'll bring it back into the channel if I do any more maintenance videos. But yeah, guys, this is what I would consider a full size, a handful of a knife, right? So I can get a full four finger grip, no problem. A lot of the slip joints that I've learned are smaller. This is not. This is a medium sized. And this handle, even though it's kind of odd shaped when you look at it, it really fits the hand well. It fits into the cup of your hand and into the palm of your hand. Again, I'm not good at grading this on a scale, but the walking talk, I'll let you listen to it. So I feel that it's done very well. With comparing it to a very limited amount of slip joints that I have, Again, I'm getting into this, guys, kind of blind. But let's do a couple of quick size comparisons. Again, when we talk about slip joints, I leave our cold steel floor max out of it, and I start off with a Benchmade bug out to see how that lines up, because I think everybody knows the size of a Benchmade bug out, even if they don't own one, they've held one. And then the mini bug out, I think we've all seen those. And this shows that this hippo toe, like the Tucson, is going to come in right between about a quarter inch smaller than the bug out and about almost a quarter inch larger than the baby bug out. A couple of other size comparisons, and then we will grab our Ben Peterson ruler from NAFCO. For those of you who have a PM2, People go, John, why don't you show a PM3? It makes more sense. Guys, I have three PM2s. I have no PM3s, and there's a reason for that. It's totally subjective. People tell me I'm crazy. I just don't like the PM3. It's, I've got a smaller, medium-sized hand, but the PM2 fits me better. But that gives you a good size comparison, kind of splits the difference between the Civivi Baby Banter and the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Now let's look at it next to my first slip joint, which is the Ohio River Jack. Probably has the best for walk and talk, or one of the best walk and talks in the collection. A little bit larger than the Ohio River Jack, and that means it's going to be a little bit larger than the QSP Hedgehog. So guys, Whoops, let's pull it back to size. About the same size as the QSP Hedgehog, within just a little bit, and the same size as the uh, as the Ohio River Jack. So what we will do now is we will get our Ben Peterson NAFCO ruler, and we will get you some quick dimensions. I have a feeling I can guess what these are going to be. Nope, I was wrong. So the blade is two and three quarters. The cutting edge is right a sconce over two and a half. Might as well call that two and a half. The handle is four and an eighth. Um, the overall length, six and three quarters, roughly. The blade, again, D2, it's got about a 50% flat at the top, drops to that really acute point about halfway down, has a very nice sharpening choil here on the spine. And guys, that's another thing. Two seconds. And it may have, may have been early user error um, on one of my first slip joints or one of my third or fourth, I forget. I was They came dull and I put it on my TS Prof and thought 17 degrees was the way to go. They didn't come with an edge, and it was okay, but I have learned that using my field work sharp, field sharpener, 
which has got both a rougher diamond plate and a smooth diamond plate and ceramic rods which I don't use I go to a strop but I use this system for sharpening my slip joints uh, especially the bokers that I've gotten that did not come really with an edge I'll talk about that when I do the reviews it's okay but I love my fixed angle system my TS Prof 360 and um, Kyle Coonley said something, and y'all leave it in the, com in the comments, that I need a thinner fillet clip. But I don't really know why that would be an issue because I'm not bumping into the actual mill clip that I have. And I would think that holding the knife, holding the knife, I just think that um, slip joints from what I read are more of a 20 degree, kind of right in there angle. But what I've noticed is, by using the WorkSharp Fuel Sharpener, I can really get in there, I can find my bevel, I can kind of set my bevel, I do it differently than Jared, but I've even thought about getting a little stone holder for my four inch venes because I really don't need anything larger than this to keep my um, slip joints maintained. And I've been really pleased with that. So I'm kind of getting the, uh, the old feel of having the slip joint and I'm also getting my feet wet with hand sharpening because I don't mind doing it. But guys, I appreciate you spending some time with me today and taking a look at, if you've made it this long, my Hippo Toe. Um, I think it's a great knife for 57 bucks. It wouldn't be necessarily the first slip joint I recommended somebody because it is kind of big and you do feel it in your pocket, even in my um, traditional knife work slip. But guys, please, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. Just in real short, it would help me a lot. Um, please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please be kind and look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate over hate. I love you all. Peace.